Humans are responsible for releasing around 49 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions every year. This is from electricity production, industry, transportation, residential uses and agriculture. This has resulted in the greatest level of warming seen in the past 55 million years. Within 61 years, the average global temperature increased by 1 degree C and last year the atmospheric CO2 concentration reached 400 parts per million. However, the soil of a particular ecosystem traps another 500 billion tonnes of carbon, 2.5 times that of the soil of all the rainforests combined. This ecosystem, a dark horse in the global greenhouse gas budget, covers about 29% of land and earth and is called tundra. There are three types of tundra. Antarctic tundra, alpine tundra and arctic tundra. Few trees grow in this ecosystem. The main types of vegetation found here are low-growing plants such as dwarf shrubs, lichens, sedges and mosses. Tundra is the coldest biome found on earth. This polar climate has little rainfall and short growing seasons during which the sun shines 24 hours a day. Beneath the surface of the tundra lies a layer of frozen soil called permafrost. It traps a large amount of carbon from roots and other plant material, animals and animal remains, and deposits of carbon-rich permafrost. When this permafrost begins to thaw, so will the organic matter trapped inside it, allowing the carbon compounds to decay. They are broken down by microbes, which in the presence of oxygen produces carbon dioxide. In anaerobic conditions, methane is produced. These greenhouse gases escape from the soil into the atmosphere where they will contribute to global warming. Going back to 14,000 years ago, there was a dry climate which supported the growth of grasses. This led to evolution of animals including horses, bisons, lions, oxen, woolly rhinos, woolly mammoths and wolves. These herbivores and predators made up the mammoth steppe ecosystem. Herbivores ate and trampled down the grasses and quickly returned the chemical elements to the soil. In the spring, when growing grasses were covered with snow, UV light was reflected, allowing the accretion of the permafrost. However, human settlers slaughtered the animals and disrupted the balance of the ecosystem. Looking for a solution to this problem, Russian biologist Sergei Zimov created Pleistocene Park in Chersky. He realised that mammoths and other herbivores helped to keep the climate cool, so he is trying to restore their pre-Holocene ecosystem and thus engineer global cooling. He is planning to collect a herd of Yukushian horses, reindeer from Sweden, modern bisons from Canada and musk oxen from Alaska. As well as this, he is planning to introduce predators such as tigers to control herbivore populations. The extinction of mammoths and the expansion of forest areas would contribute greatly to global warming. Before their extinction, mammoths knocked down the trees, controlling the forest growth, but now, due to the lack of mammoths, Zimov has to do this with tanks. But what if the mammoths could be brought back? This may now be possible due to the process of de-extinction. This method can be used to produce mammoth-like hybrids with adaptions including haemoglobin which releases oxygen at low temperatures, a thick layer of insulating fat, and thick fur. This is done by introducing mammoth genes into the genome of the closely related Asian elephant. The modified genome can then be inserted into an elephant skin cell which has been reprogrammed to become an embryonic cell. Cell division can then be electrically or chemically stimulated before the cell is implanted into a surrogate elephant mother. After 22 months, the elephant will give birth to a mammoth with features enabling it to survive in cold environments. Bringing back animals similar to those of the Pleistocene era along with a genetically engineered mammoth is crucial for the restoration of the mammoth tundra steppe. Re-establishing this particular ecosystem will not only keep carbon frozen in permafrost, but may also contribute to the area economically. Restoration of this ecosystem can prevent runaway warming like we've never seen before. The remaining question is, what effect reintroducing extinct species could have on the present day ecosystems?